obviously, uh, Mohamed Morsi has been deposed starting about two days ago uh, in a military coup d'etat or putsch over in Egypt. Now, I have mixed analysis on this, but overall, this is a big blow to the globalist, and this is not what they wanted. They wanted to put the Muslim Brotherhood and Al-Qaeda in charge of every Middle Eastern and North African country, and even spill that into Central uh, Africa, as well as the uh, East Coast of Africa, particularly. But it also goes into the West Coast, all the way down into Nigeria. This is the plan. The globalist crime syndicate that controls our government and other governments runs radical Islam on record. I've been telling you that for 15, 16 years. I didn't even really understand that the first few years I was on air. and being called the ultimate evil and conspiracy. But now it's all openly admitted. But it just hangs out there in plain view. And the state and the system uses the fear of the Muslim extremists that they wind up and fund and control as a pretext to take our liberties and launch all these wars. So it's really elementary uh, what's going on. So we're going to be going over some of that today. Also, big NSA scandals. Uh, we told you about this years ago. We told you about it last week with uh, Wayne Madsen when it was denoticed and expunged out of the London Guardian and, and Observer under government orders that the EU is spying illegally on all their citizens as well and sharing it with England and the United States and that we even use the foreigners to spy on us and then our so-called government spies on them. It's total globalization. Training everyone to let foreigners rule over you. Just like they're now going to have Canadian police on this side of the border policing American citizens and vice versa. That's been announced uh, just yesterday, and that story's up on Infowars.com. It's just this, 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 this incremental ratcheting up of uh, tyranny, a conversion into a police state. So we're going to be getting into the NSA, latest information, huge developments in the bond market. Have central banks lost control? Could the bond bubble implode even if there is no tapering? And again, uh, that's, that's happening right now. Several point losses just today so far in the bond market, a few months later than what Kaiser said. We'll see if he turns out being completely right, if it really, really continues to collapse. So we're going to get into Morrissey and that unbelievable development. Uh, the European states ordering an aircraft with a sovereign leader, Morales, to have his aircraft forced down, believing that Snowden may have been on board. The Bolivian leader's flight, unbelievable. That's New World Order for you. Piracy in the skies, on the streets, you name it. Uh, also, another Infowars.com article. Commercials to be broadcast directly into consumers' heads. I first started covering this about 16 years ago when I saw MIT reporting on it. And then about 10 years ago when Tokyo started actually putting these in into soft drink machines and vending machines. We're at a distance, it beams into your brain, but it made people so upset in Tokyo and in LA in, in trials they, they withdrew it but now they don't care and Homeland Security will be beaming directly to your head and they'll be taking over your cell phone with government messages see the NSA takeover isn't just one way where they spy on you then they force their conduit onto you it's really an internet takeover we're going to break that down as well Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happened. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show. Okay, let me try to be disciplined here and just tell you what's coming up today. Obviously, the unbelievable military coup d'etat against Mohamed Morsi in Egypt, a big deal. This is not what the New World Order wanted. I'm going to give you my researched historical take on that. 
first after I tell you what else is coming up. Paul Watson wrote an article yesterday morning that went viral via DrudgeReport.com from Infowars.com. Homeland Security conducts top secret July 4th drill, TSA undercover agents to patrol transport hubs. And we have links as sources on that to KTTV uh, and the Los Angeles Times. And there were indeed federalized police all over the U.S. running warrantless checkpoints, searching people's bags on highways, roads, downtown areas, transportation hubs. That is martial law. It is martial law when Congress is told two years in a row that our military is under NATO command and Congress isn't over the power of the purse uh, and the military. It is martial law when the NSA spies on you without warrants, committing felonies every single time. It is martial law when $85 billion a month, now for the last two years, it was $40 billion a month before that previously, under QE Infinity, is given to mainly offshore banks and private companies media companies, manufacturing companies, banks, you name it. 85 bill a month and Congress is told they can't be told who it's given to. Five years ago, I have the Obama deception with clip after clip in Congress of them saying that. And I was watching C-SPAN during breaks last Tuesday of this week. Just this Tuesday, and they were doing the same thing, saying, we won't answer your questions. It's not even a news issue now. That's called brazen tyranny. And that's why it's going to get worse. Because the tyrants kind of have an orgy. And then soon, they figure out nothing can stop them. And they just go completely wild. Until things come full circle and the military puts a stop to it. That, that tends to be what happens, but then it just falls back into corruption because all of the corruption is in place. It's very rare that the military stands up and something good comes out of it. And, and I'll tie that into Morrissey in a minute. There's only been a few revolutions run by people like the original revolutionary boss of liberty, George Washington, who fought, let's be conservative, 10 to 1 odds, 10 to 1 odds in a 7 plus year war and won through pure perseverance, and then was offered to be king and gave it up, and the king of England called him the greatest man alive in the world. Because their ancestors had all gotten it through military victories, being generals and things, hundreds of years before. They knew how you became a king. They knew how you set up a dynasty over what would become the greatest empire the world had ever seen. What, I mean, we might have George the Tenth right now. But he said no and went home to his farm. I was at Barton Springs yesterday. Went and swam a half mile. Didn't have a lot of time. After I jogged around Town Lake. And I walked in and I saw the coolest shirt ever. I'm going to make our own variant of it. This was by Ranger Up. Group of rangers that put out great t-shirts i've seen them before and this guy was wearing this shirt that was red it was supposed to look like che guevara at a distance but it was really a big tri-cornered hat in george washington and it said the original revolutionary this is not product placement i'm gonna get one and on the back it said you know led troops against overwhelming odds and won uh, was offered to be king turned it down and, and, and it had some other statements about George Washington. That's what the 4th of July is all about. Not government making itself king and every bureaucrat making themselves a lord in your area and taking on the very same imperious, arrogant attitudes towards the people. It is disgraceful. So I'm going to get into that today. And all the time when I hear a rebroadcast, I say I'm going to cover this, I say I'm going to cover that, I don't get to everything. I've got to tell you the stories of what happened yesterday. Just when I jogged around the hike and bike trail and when I went swimming in Barton Springs. In fact, I'll tell that now. Then I'll get into Morrissey. Then I'll get into Homeland Security conducts top secret July 4th drill. Federalizing police with grants to go out and run warrantless checkpoints. That's police going under federal control, literally urinating all over the Bill of Rights and Constitution in the name of safety. Well, yeah, safety for the tyrants. Also, Jakari Jackson went down yesterday and filed the report this morning. And we're going to premiere it here at the bottom of the next hour to the armed march on the Texas Capitol. And we've checked the laws um, 
you cannot take weapons into the Capitol, but off the Capitol grounds, the police violated the law and violated the Constitution and, and through color of law ordered people to take their clips out of their rifles, which, by the way, weren't even loaded. So disgraceful activities uh, right there. But people say they complied. And again, these guys had the courage to go out with rifles on the street, knowing it's legal and lawful, but that people, it's like seeing a black person after slavery was ended, you know, running their own business. People would go and burn it down. It's like, hey, you're not going to run a business and be free. And it's the same thing. We're having our own civil rights of having guns and openly carrying them to say, look, stop trying to put our guns in the closet so you can then ban them. We're out of the closet with our guns. We're not ashamed of it. And still, the Austin police, the same ones that three months ago tried to say we couldn't hand out magazines downtown until I had to threaten to sue them, lo and behold, went and violated the Constitution Bill of Rights along with the state police. I'm going to be showing that coming up. Total color of law. I, I think I need to now just get around to it, get a loaded rifle, and go march up and down. And they'll, they'll, try, some, they'll try some fake disorderly conduct or something, and I'll have cameras, and I'll beat it. And, you know, they try to slam my head in the ground or something and then say I resisted them, whatever. I mean, at a certain point, we got to sit at the front of the bus here. We're not sitting at the back of the bus anymore. And, and just watching this, it, it, it's got to be dealt with. So Jakari Jackson is going to be in here at the bottom of the hour. Paul Watson's coming up uh, later in this hour. And Max Kaiser, we just called him. Uh, I thought, hey, why don't we try to get Max Kaiser on right before the show started? Uh, because he predicted the bond market would begin to uh, implode, and that's now starting. And even mainstream corporate media is saying this may be, 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 be the beginning of that. Now, they may pump it back up or something. They've got all sorts of insider trading tricks, but, but we'll find out with Max Kaiser. Last 30 minutes today, just to give you an idea of how big this, this broadcast is going to be. So that's just some of what we're going to be uh, breaking down today. And then I do want to mention a Mediaite and Newsbuster article before this hour ends that are just another example of disinformation. And I'm seeing this every day against InfoWars.com and yours truly, where they will take something I've said that is mainstream media, alternative media, for reasons of jealousy, reasons of envy, reasons of uh, establishment bootlicking, especially when it's media matters run by the White House or MSNBC, they will say and, and, and edit clips of what I've said out of context to misrepresent what I've said. So I will get to that uh, briefly. Incredible. Incredible what they can do with editing. And I don't know who edited it, but uh, it's just what they do. And my listeners need to understand, this is going to happen more and more. And it's generally off of calls. Uh, you'll call in, you'll say, could this be weather weapons that hit Oklahoma, the tornadoes? And I say, well, weather weapons are real, and here's the history, and here's a Fox News, and AP article, and here's a Daily Mail story. But I don't think this was probably a weather weapon. But you can never tell because they've already modified the atmosphere so much, they may, may not even know they've done something that's causing a problem. But I said, it's probably a real tornado. Tornadoes are at 60-year lows. Here's USA Today. That turns into, I said Obama sent the tornado. And, and folks, it's every day without looking now. They'll put out an article going, he's lying. 200,000 bullets got bought. And they'll show one line item out of thousands of bullet purchases the last two years, over $2 billion, And just say, look, he's a liar, and put it in hundreds of newspapers. And they just do it constantly. And they do it from the right wing, the left wing, because it's all a bunch of establishment people who are threatened by the fact that we're expanding people's horizons and getting people to think outside the box. And I, I bring this up because it's positive that InfoWars is being attacked from every angle. That's happening because we're so on target, ladies and gentlemen. We're going off globalist source documents. We know what we're talking about. So that's coming up uh, as well today. Now, when we come back here in about a minute and a half, uh, I will, uh, we're going to break in about a minute and a half. I'll come back into the Morrissey. And then as I said, uh, the big banking news, it's all up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. And then after I've covered Morrissey, I'll get into the latest NSA, uh, the Bolivian 
president's plane was ordered down by the, quote, U.S. in Europe to look if Snowden was on board. Uh, see, there's no diplomatic immunity for countries unless they're in the inside gang. It's not the U.S. that ordered this. It's the big banks that run America. The whole world knows. I mean, that Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, Bank of England, Bundesbank runs America and the nuclear weapons. The Army War College brags about this. And the Russians are scared. The communist Chinese aren't scared. They're, they're in a secret alliance that's been declassified uh, with the globalists since they put Mao in in 1949. And that's why everybody's so scared. It's the United States and all the nuclear weapons with the communist Chinese in, a, in an alliance against the world. And they use the Chinese labor against the American people. I mean, we are just under total occupation. And those aren't just words. So I'm also going to get into the fact that we're really under a type of martial law that they're phasing in incrementally. And now cybersecurity is really pointed at the Internet and the free press. We'll explain that as well. Because there's a war on for your mind. That has been our motto here at InfoWars for my 18 years of battle against the globalist. And now we see the open announcements of global, private, corporate tyranny over our governments. That's what the New World Order is. It's an unaccountable private combine of organized crime engaged in corporate takeovers of nation states. And the conscious attempt to abolish basic rights and fundamental liberties. Infowars.com is not just leading the charge against this here in the U.S. or North America. We are leading the charge worldwide. And that's because our listeners, our viewers, our supporters, fellow freedom lovers like you across the planet resonate with our message of liberty and telling it like it is. And that's why for the last two years especially, I have thrown everything I've got, my time, my energy, our backup capital, everything into really trying to awaken the sleeping giant that is humanity. And that's why the July issue that just came in a few days ago is so important. We've already sold about half the stock we have of it at cost in groups of 10 up to 100 in bulk. It covers the entire NSA spy grid, how it ties in worldwide, how it's not about stopping terrorists, but about suppressing and dominating and controlling the free press and political opposition. And in this magazine, we don't just have three free bumper stickers like I did a few months ago. We have 10 bumper stickers, four full-size ones with amazing messages guaranteed to get people thinking like America has been occupied by globalist forces, InfoWars.com. Listen to Alex Jones at InfoWars.com. InfoWars.com, forbidden information. Listen to Alex Jones, InfoWars.com. And then on top of it, six medium-sized bumper stickers with the message as well. These are key to post in legal and lawful areas on your book bag, your computer, your car, or to give friends and family. I have printed 500,000 of these bumper stickers. Only half of this month's run of magazines has them. So when you purchase them in bulk or you're a 12-month subscriber, you will get the special issue. And I can't afford to do this every month, so it's going to be quite a while until we do this again. Please take advantage of this. Buy them in bulk and give them to your friends and family and encourage them to get these bumper stickers out because with 500,000 stickers, we can reach tens of millions of people with the message of truth. They want to collectivize us. They want to bankrupt us. They want to drive us into their arms to control us. They want to dumb us down. But the sleeping giant that is for humanity is awakening. So I want to thank you all for your support. I want to encourage everybody to go to InfoWarsStore.com and to get a 12-month subscription or to give a gift subscription. Imagine 12 of these coming to your friends or family's door to wake them up. Or to give a gift subscription to the local police department or your local congressman or woman. This is how we're going to affect change, voting with our dollars and voting with our time. Again, visit InfoWarsStore.com today to subscribe, to get the magazine in bulk, or to give a gift subscription, or to give yourself a subscription to wake up friends and family. I am all in. 
I am committed 110% to not mince words and to not back off and to boldly confront the globalist. And our listeners and supporters, our info warriors, who aren't behind us, they're right beside us. So I want to thank all of you that have supported us in the past, and I want to encourage all of you out there who may be on the fence that know this information is true but have been scared to take action. You had better be scared of not taking action and letting this monstrous system come to fruition. Now is the time to commit. Now is the time to say which side of history you're on. Now is the time to stand against the globalist and the New World Order. And regardless of whether you get this July issue, this July 4th resistance to tyrants issue, spread the word about liberty, resist corruption in your area. Millions of us doing little things can move mountains together. I'm Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com and the InfoWars team. And I have never alive. been more aware of the tyranny and corruption and never been more driven to resist the globalists than I was yesterday. I was literally on fire with the light of liberty. Brush fires were burning in my own mind, and I had a desire to spread the brush fires of liberty into the minds of men and women everywhere. And here I am, and here you are, and I'm very honored and thankful that you're listening. And it was almost like a pilgrim's progress, the few hours I spent down around the river and then going swimming, listening to people and talking to people. I ran into people laying there on the grass bragging about how they were going to work for the NSA to spy on people. I, I ran into people that walked up and said, shut up, you shouldn't have free speech in America. It was, it was bizarre. But I also ran into uh, just incredible people that were totally awake and burning with the fires of liberty. There's really a spiritual choice happening, not just here, but all over the world. There is a great awakening happening, a new enlightenment, a new renaissance. And the establishment knows that and is doing everything it can to suppress that spirit. And you're going to have a lot of people that decide to serve the evil. And I look at people that serve the globalist, how, they, how they're animated on power trips because they work for the system, and they're such little people. They're so pathetic. I'm going to break some of that down coming up. But right now, let's get into Muhammad Morrissey. Well, this is what we know on record. At the Grove Hotel in Watford, England, three years ago, Google met with MI6, French intelligence, German intelligence, Dutch intelligence, and others with Google running the meeting. This has been the London Guardian. Google's proud of it. See, see, they love to brag about what they're doing. And they all met and they, and they said, we're going to fund radical Muslims in North Africa, into the Middle East, and we're going to overthrow these countries and put Al-Qaeda in charge of Libya and Syria. And we're going to put Muslim Brotherhood, Al-Qaeda Light, who will then financially support them in control of Egypt, in control of Iraq, and they're even going to try to do this in Iran. And it is basically all Saudi Arabia working with the West to do this. And cause a revolution between Sunni and Shiite. And Sunnis are about 79% of the Muslims. So it's the majority group the globalists are allied with. And the core of that is Al-Qaeda. Not attacking Sunnis here, but that's just a fact. Most Sunnis aren't a bunch of crazy you know, people crucifying Christians in mass and cutting their hearts out and eating them on TV. I mean, this is what's going on and blowing up churches every two or three days, firebombing mosques that, uh, that are minority groups they don't agree with, minority group Muslims, uh, crucifying Christians at the presidential palace in Cairo. I mean, we post videos of this and YouTube takes them down and they take other people's down as well, but this is all online. I mean, I see this stuff, 5,000 Al-Qaeda in a square chanting, we will destroy America, we will blow you up, we will chop your heads off, we will, and there's a new video out today with them saying this. The FSA fighters going, after Assad, America, I will use missiles to destroy you, and it's, you know, it's the, I mean, they're not playing games. But then the cop, you'll be at a checkpoint, you're like, line up, I'm going to search your vehicle. You know, after 9-11, things changed. The government runs Al-Qaeda. The government is foreign banks. 
This is why they hate me, folks. I'll just state the elephant in the room. And so I don't like military coups. People try to, to, to romanticize a military coup here in America to, to restore the republic. It may have to come to that someday, but by then it'll all be drones, so it'll be almost impossible. That's the globalist checkmate they're going to. But they have things planned so horrible that they plan to go after the military and police who won't play ball. That's why they say the new terror threat is veterans, gun owners, and active duty, because they know that's the group who has the most constitutional information left in their brains. If you're on a power trip, you know, believe the state's almighty and, you know, you're doing a good job, so everybody better get out of your way, you'll be just fine for a while. But those of you who believe they know who you are, they're going to come after you in a night of the long knives. So when we come back, I'll finish up with my take uh, on uh, what's happening in Morrissey. It's uh, with Morrissey and uh, what's happening with the military over there. The, I mean, it's on record. The military says the West is funding basically an al-Qaeda takeover in Egypt, and we're not going to have jihadis running this country. And so our criminal government is trying to tell the military to put Morrissey and al-Qaeda and the Muslim Brotherhood back in charge. Our government runs al-Qaeda, period. Our viewers have demanded it, so now you're going to get it. More pro Second Amendment gun shows in the month of June. What we've learned is you cannot hide behind an I beam when there's a 50 cal present. Brothers in Arms, 50 cal ammo review, and more coming in the month of June to the Info War. And look at the cover of Drudge. Friday of Rage, Islamicist push back. And it shows the shaved head, uh, big bearded jihadis. And I'm not saying all Muslims that have beards are bad. My point is, these are radical globalist jihadis that are openly killing Shiites and other Alawite minority groups and burning down churches and attacking Christians in mass and the Egyptian military basically has its roots in Bathist to, to, to understand this in Bathist leaders so does Syria so does Iraq who said we want to build power plants we want to build dams we want to we want to have movie theaters we want our girls to go to college uh, and not wear burqas over their heads and there has been a fight for a hundred years a hundred years by Saudi Arabia and their corrupt regime with the globalist to put radical Islam in charge everywhere. That's why if you're historically informed, it's such a joke on 9-11 to say Al-Qaeda did this when criminal elements of our government created it. The hijackers were trained at U.S. bases. Newsweek Associated Press. I don't know exactly what happened. I just know there better be a real independent investigation. There was definitely a stand down, and they definitely used 9-11 to take our liberties. Don't you get it? They're criminal elements in the government who are using radical Islam to bring countries down. And Adolf Hitler was elected president. They have a president and a chancellor in Germany at that time in 1933. And then Kaiser Wilhelm got so sick and old and the coalition government was falling apart, so Hitler then became Fuhrer, chancellor and president at the same time, or the leader. Then a few months later, he firebombed the Capitol, blamed it on his political enemies, drugged up a mentally ill person, Marinus Vanderlub, had a show trial and chopped his head off. And you go, what does this have to do with Mohammed Morrissey? Hitler was elected. Obama was elected, if you believe that. The communists sat around and voted in committees and elected Mao. Julius Caesar was given much of his powers before he became king by the Senate. So people are saying, and, and Obama's saying, and the media's saying, how dare the military of Egypt 
depose Mohamed Morrissey, who they quietly came to when 14 million people were in the streets. On Monday, the biggest demonstration in world history, 14 million in Cairo, and it's now been released by the London Guardian by the military of Egypt saying, here's what happened, here's the timeline. And Morrissey's confirmed that that is indeed the case. They came to him on Monday and they said, you got to step down right now. We can't control these people. They're going to overthrow everything. The, people say, well, the Egyptian military was trained in the U.S. The Egyptian military, you know, they're not good. The point is Morrissey was so bad, the people would already won. You know, when you've got thousands of people to every copper military in the streets, it's over. They would have burned the entire country down to the ground. So the military comes to him and says, listen, we're getting funded by the globalists. We're doing what you say. You know, you're lighting Christians on fire. I mean, he would take them. They're burning them in the streets. They were crucifying them at the presidential palace. There's film of this. At, imagine lined with Christians crucified. This is our government supporting this. And notice it's never on our news, folks. Because it's not politically correct. If a gay person gets punched in the nose in public, it's a hate crime. The person is arrested. It's national news for six weeks. We have footage and an article going up right now of groups of gay people beating up Christians and the police doing nothing and the media spinning it like it was a brawl. And again, I'm not getting into some obsession over gay people. I'm quite frankly, I'm sick of hearing about it. My point is it's the same deal. You're beating up Christians, you're burning Christians or Muslim minority groups that are nonviolent like Alawites that are a totally nonviolent group. This is the type of out of control garbage that's happening right now. And so that's what I'm getting at here is that Hitler was elected. So just because Morrissey was elected a year ago and then had a reign of terror, cities under martial law, uh, Sharia law being put in, uh, families that wanted their girls to go to college, kicking them out of college, slapping burqas on women's heads. You know, Muslims didn't even do that until the last couple hundred years. And that's a Saudi Arabian thing. Rich women who had to go in the market who didn't want their didn't want their skin burned. It was upper class to have unblemished white skin because it meant you didn't work in the fields. Same thing in Europe where everybody was white. Like Schwartz, Schwarzenegger means black plowman. Just meant you were out in the field. It was lower class to have a son, to, you know, be a redneck. Well, it's the same thing in the Middle East. Women wore those as upper class, and then sometimes really rich women would wear a full thing because they, if they had to go through town, you don't get to look at them. Then it became a style that they then basically Islamicized. This is real reality you're hearing about right here. If they had some ultra-rich you know, woman being transported by ship to visit, say, her father, and she's going to go out on the deck of the ship. She covers her face up because these people don't even get to look at her. When she gets out at the palace, she's wearing a crown. Everybody sees her face. This is how they use style to control people. Going back thousands of years ago, the inner court would say, you, you're so royal, you, you can't walk. We have to carry you. Let's bind your feet. You're such a princess. Let's bind them. That's where high heel shoes, all of that comes from. That's how they use style to control us. And I'm going to go to Paul Watson here in a moment. I just want to give you background on all this. So I'm not saying it's even a good thing the military deposed Mohammed Morrissey. But from a geopolitical thing of what happened, it is a devastating blow against the New World Order. And that's why the EU and the Global Crime Syndicate and Obama are reeling with anger. They are turning Al-Qaeda loose, which is part of their deal for Al-Qaeda to take the blame for 9-11, to send in its double agents, to be involved in that, that, that Saudi Arabia and the bin Ladens were given in one week after 9-11, a $3 billion uh, defense contracting deal just for bases in the Middle East. Look it up. Immediately $3 billion extra. Uh, the Carlisle Group, Bush Sr. was meeting with the bin Ladens in the morning of 9-11 in D.C. at their table. That was their deal to take the blame and all of that. That's why Bandar Bush was on Larry King Live. That's his nickname, the Saudi Arabian prince, the ambassador from Saudi Arabia to the U.S. a week after 9-11. And, and Larry King badmouthed Osama bin Laden. And Bandar said, do not talk of this great man this way, disrespectfully. And Larry King said, I apologize. Ooh, 
you see, because they knew that was going to be broadcast in Saudi Arabia. It's like, no, you don't talk of a man of great honor this way. Because he really already died of kidney failure right around that time. And so it was, he was, he was all just a cutout. And then their deal was, you get everything. We take out your enemy Iraq. The Americans are so dumb. You supply the reported hijackers, 15 of them. The funding, the cover, all this came out in the news. We'll take out Iraq, the bath is secular people to the north of you, and we'll bring in your, your, your uh, jihadis and we'll let you take over. And then later we're going to give you Syria. We're going to give you Libya. We're going to give you all of North Africa. We're going to give you Egypt. We're going to give you everything. And even Wesley Clark admitted this in a speech he gave that that was the plan, to invade six countries over there and turn it over to Saudi Arabia. That's what they've done. This is a real geopolitical fact you're hearing, and this is why we're under such attack, because we're just pointing out the emperor is wearing no clothes. The parable of the emperor's new clothes, if you haven't read it, look it up. It's online. Understand it. I'm just pointing out what is admitted fact because I want liberty and freedom and they're using this fake Al-Qaeda threat to overthrow our country as well. And it is a crime against humanity to overthrow Libya and put in jihadis who've killed over 40,000 innocent people on record with machetes and are killing the black Christians and black Africans, uh, Muslims that are in the area and are just absolutely tearing out the infrastructure of that place. That's their job. And now they're doing it in Syria and they're going to do it everywhere. This is unbelievable. And so the military comes. People are trying to say the military are heroes standing up to the jihadist. They don't have a choice. The globalists want to wreck every country, not just the Muslim countries, not just Pakistan. Our government put tens of thousands of jihadis in there to bomb and blow stuff up. And then our government goes and bombs innocent people to try to cause an overthrow of the Pakistani government. That's come out on record. That is the reality of what's going on here. And so they didn't even have a choice. 14 million people, the government was going to fall. The last biggest crowds were 3 million. 14 million, mainly secularist. And where's the big liberal, you know, trendy atheist crowd? They're supporting Obama, folks. They're supporting the jihadis because they'll do whatever they're told. We go out on man on the street in California, in Austin, you name it. We walk up to the trendy areas and we say, take all the guns, put all Tea Partiers in FEMA camps for Obama. And they go, yes, do it. Because we said for Obama. See, because they're on the winning team. They're with Obama. He's got a peace prize, Jack. Anybody seen lately? He's part African. He can't do any wrong. This is the mindlessness. Uh, when you watch MSNBC, all they talk about is how smart liberals are and how dumb everybody else is. Folks, that's because their viewers are the dumbest people on the earth. And it's a cult of how smart they are when they can't even tie their shoelaces. I was 30 feet away on the hike and bike bridge. I just jogged about a mile and a half. I stopped. I was going to shoot a quick video, which I did upload about the federalization of police with checkpoints all over the country and how it's part of the integration of martial law. And I look over, I'm going to tell the whole story later if I have time. I look uh, you know, over and I see this woman about 30 feet away saying something loud. And it sounds like, shut up, shut up your brainwashing. And I'm talking, I'm not talking loud on the video. You can see the video I shot. Then I turn it off. I'm, not, I'm talking about in this voice right here on the hiking bike trail on the pedestrian bridge talking about checkpoints all over the country. And I walk over. And her and her husband are laughing at me. And they obviously know who I am because I was down the bridge. They couldn't have heard what I was even saying. And they go, yeah, shut up. And, I'm, and I looked at it. They look like government employees, feds, basically. He looked like a 50-year-old military type. She looked like a socialist liberal type. And I said, well, I mean, what's brainwashing? How'd you even hear what I was talking about? I'm way over there. She, and, and, and the husband goes, leave now. And at that point, I went, I went, whoa, I've got a First Amendment. I said, I bet she can't even articulate why I'm a brainwasher. Come on, have a debate with me. I'm being very nice. He starts getting up and he goes, I told you to leave. And I went, all right, buddy, 
and I and I turned and put my hands. So I was going to let him hit me first, and then I was just going to absolutely tear his. Well, <laughs> I'm not going to say. The point is, is that is I turned and put my hands on the rail, and I said, you know what? I got a First Amendment. Because I gave him the chance to walk away. And he goes, fine, we'll leave. Then she starts calling the police on me as I start shooting another video 50 yards away. And, and you could see that video from that point on. I started recording again. But the point is, that's the enemy, folks. They saw Alex Jones. There's, there's no way they didn't just see Sky with a camera sitting there shooting video 30 feet away and then you know get mad at him. They saw me and they wanted to laugh and they wanted to diss me. And they wanted to have me just get upset by it like they would and walk away fearfully. They wanted to peck at me and just teach me that I'm their slave. Let me just finish the rest of the story since I got to this and I'll finish up with uh, what happened with Morrissey and then go to Paul Watson. Then I finish jogging because it's, it's, it's a mile and a half to there and about a mile and a half back to Barton Springs. I get there, go in, go back to my car, get my mask and snorkel, go in, swim a half mile. I go lay out on the side of the grass, getting dried off, and immediately, I mean, I just learned all the types. There's there's uh, two male cops and their wives, and I assess them. They're all in their 40s. You can tell they work for the state or the feds. These guys are cops, tattoos, former military stuff, shaved heads, laying out. And there's another woman, a third woman, and they're talking about her husband, so he's not going to work with the state anymore. No, you know, he's going in for that cybersecurity job at the new center in San Antonio, and they're all, the women have all got their nails and they're rubbing on themselves and all feeling powerful. Because they're part of the ruling class. They're part of the government. And they're looking at everyone and, you know, they're sitting there with their visors and everything and feeling very confident. And I look over and I go, I'm, I'm sitting two feet from them. That's where I put my towel out before they even got there. And before I went swimming, now I'm out. And I put my shirt on, stuff, and I look over and I go, oh, is that the NSA? Real nicely. And I knew what she'd do as soon as I said it. I knew she'd laugh at me. But I did it as a psych warfare test for myself, just to t test myself. I looked at her real nice and said, oh, is that the NSA data center? And she looked back and they all look and they laugh and they go, and, and, they, and she rubbed her legs when she did it, the pleasure of being part of the system. <laughs> Not gonna tell you that. With her red lipstick all sexy, America's ours now. She didn't say that, she went, Not gonna tell you that. And smacked her lips and the, and the cops, might even have been feds. They kind of got their shoulders up a little bit out there, and they were just, ugh, this is our country now. I mean, it was just, ooh. And I looked at them with, and, I, and I'm more powerful in person. I looked at them, and I said, you know deep down you're on the wrong side of history, and everything you're doing is illegal, and you know this country is going under, and that tyranny is being empowered. You're being told to walk around in an arrogant mode. And I said, when we get this country back, all of you that have engaged in crimes are going to be brought to justice. Do you understand that? And they weren't laughing anymore. I looked at those cops and I told them. And man, then I went and did the 4th of July deal. We rented kayaks, went out with hundreds of people with kayaks to watch the fireworks. And I could just spot the imperious nature of cops and bureaucrats. And I'd go, hey, you're, you're a cop, aren't you? And the guy'd be like, how do you know that? Oh, Alex Jones. And again, I, and I could tell, I couldn't tell good cops who aren't on power trips because they're just normal people out there. But I could tell the little boys, little boys, I don't need an NSA computer to know who you are. I've got the genetics of all my ancestors. And I've got common sense. I've got discernment and I see you. I see all of you. And you have signed on to total destruction. We have a government on record that's done thousands of lethal tests on our own military and police and citizens, and no one ever got in trouble. What does that tell you? At the top is pure evil. This country is occupied by pure evil, and I am on the air ringing the alarm bell. And it was disgusting to watch those people on power trips over the NSA spying on people. They were having an orgy of power trips in front of me. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.